She was a singer from Fuller's birthplace in the Eastern Cape. And her story is one of passion, triumph, tragedy and courage. Her name, Margaret Singana, or Lady Africa, as she came to be known to her thousands of fans. That raised fist was not in any way political, just an essence of the power and the, the serenity of the way she used to sing and perform. Walked into Sackbell Studios one day and a, a black producer called Baba Matawani had done a song called Good Feeling in the wrong key. But I heard this woman's voice and I said, who is that? And I said, it's Margaret Missing Ghana and the cymbals. And I changed that to Sing Ghana. I met her in church at the IPC, you know, International Pentecostal Church, because she used to go there. I think this is just during um, the late years of her life. And, you know, as young kids, we were very excited singing this lady there, beautiful, with her afro, and um, she was on a wheelchair. <laughs> I think every child knows the um Ayo oh Ayo Hamba Begile Subu Shalanta won. The records were actually released everywhere in the world. And in Europe, um, especially in, in Belgium and here in Holland. We knew uh, some songs by her. We knew Stand By Your Man, Where's the Love, all that. And these were big hits. Her powerful soul presence crossed over into previously uncharted territory when her rendition of Mama Tembu's Wedding from the quasi-tribal musical Ippy Tombi made thousands of white listeners stand up and take notice. She was the most talented singer in the country and also a singer of yeah flawless English. She was the first true South African crossover artist and of all the accolades she received from the industry and her fans none suited her better than the simple title Lady Africa. Although her string of hits came to an abrupt end when a stroke left her confined to a wheelchair Singana's spirit has not been conquered. Margaret Singana will always be Lady Africa.